I'm Owen Mackin, and you're listening to 365 Flicks. Definitive 365 cut. These are the meaningless ramblings of a Scottish redone whore and a pissy ex video store clerk. Their ongoing mission is to set right the movie wrongs. They're gonna need a bigger podcast. Hello, you're listening to episode 53 of the 365 Flicks podcast. As always, I am Chris, the Scottish Whedon whore. And I am Kev, the pissy ex-video store clerk. Good work. And that I am. See, the way we, we stopped right before the music stopped there, that, that is a classy intro. Professional. Professional, if anything. Exactly, exactly. Welcome back to the 365 Flicks podcast, everybody. Thank you for joining us one more time. One more time. One more time? Like, you've got to keep coming back. Yeah, one more time. No, so just, one just, more time. just say one more again. That's stupid. That doesn't make sense. It does. It may not make sense, but I said it, so let's just crack on. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Okay, whatever. How are you doing tonight, Kev? Me, I am terrific. I am absolutely terrific, my friend. Excellent. Anything else you want me to say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Excellent, good I've, stuff. I've had, I've had a cheeky day off work, so I've just been dossing about the house, doing nothing. Uh, I went and picked the girls up from school, and that's about... Well, no, Lindsay did that. I, I thought about going to pick the... Well, the thought was there. The thought was there, and that's exactly what the wife said. She said, at least you thought about it, and uh, that was and that. And then she walked out the house calling you a big bastard and stuff. Yes, yeah. yes, very much so. So, uh, have you been looking at any spreadsheets today? Yes, I have. Because I know you love a spreadsheet. I do. Yes, I have a, had a busy day at work. Again. Uh, <laughs> so that's all good. It's all good. Is that why you're on the beers? Yeah. 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 So would you like to explain to the good people what is going on with this episode? Because we have a slightly different episode. We tomorrow. do have a different episode. Yeah. We do. Yes, we do. As everybody knows, everybody who is uh, an avid listener of the 365 the Flicks. millions. Exactly. <laughs> podcast. Uh, we've been getting quite a few cheeky interviews yeah. of late. Which is awesome, and thank you to everybody yep. who uh, you know who's been taking the time out of their out of their schedules to speak to us. It's just great doing this. Did you ever think when you were like you know, like fifteen years old or something like that, you thought I'll be doing a podcast and speaking to guys who are making war movies or, or people who are making Sharknado? Maybe not the the um, the podcast side of things, but I knew I was destined for this. I knew this is like where I was. Like, I used to watch Barry Norman and think one day I'm going to be Barry Norman. So you're like, he ain't got shit. Yeah, I kept thinking to myself, one day I will be an 80 year old man struggling to string a sentence together, uh, speaking to Tom Hanks. Life goals. Life, Life squad goals. Squad goals. <laughs> Hashtag squad goals. <laughs> Jesus. Pod goals. So. Thought of that on the spot. Brilliant. Good work. Good work. Good work. Yeah, so we've been getting some nice interviews and we've been getting a lot of awesome feedback from everybody. Thank you so much for everybody yeah. who's tuned in to the show, downloaded the show, keep on downloading now those podcasts, keep on sharing them, mm-hmm. keep on liking the pages and all that kind of shenanigans. Oh, we wow. very, off. very much appreciate it. But on to tonight's episode. We've decided to shovel things around a little bit. Mm-hmm. So... What we're going to be doing is, because we love our, our regular 365 Flicks uh, format, we're going to separate the, the interviews a little bit. Yeah. So we're still 365 Flicks. Don't, you know, pick your tweets away. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're not going anywhere. Uh, but we're going to be separating the interviews into something that we're going to call Indie Talk. Yeah. Because we love our indie movies. And we love speaking to guys who make indie, indie movies like uh, the fellow that we're going to be speaking to very, very soon in this episode. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a little spin-off show, kind of, sort of, called Indie Talk. Well, it's sort of like my, my whole love of cinema. I've always loved cinema, but one of, one of the things that really got me into films and the, the nitty-gritty of movies was more your independent movies, the sort of your, your Kevin Smith movies and... Stuff like that, you know, like um, Shane Meadows, and yeah, I, I, I love all those sort of. They're the movies that really strike for me, which is why when we started looking into doing like the odd cheeky interview, that's the road we wanted to go down. 
But putting it in a two and a half hour episode where we do a top five, we do we do all our normal shenanigans, which is awesome, and people keep listening to all that because I know you love it. Uh, it just felt like we were detracting away from the interview a little bit, so now we're going to give it its own time to shine in a smaller, bite-sized episode. Uh, it'll be shorter episodes, so you know you won't have to listen to our drivel as long, and it'll just be able to get their get their interview in there, get their points across, and we'll be able to promote them a little bit better. So it, to me, it just feels like we're doing them a service as well as us. Was it a moment of genius when you were on the shitter? I was on the shitter. I wouldn't say it was a moment of genius. I was just really squeezing a hard one out. You know, like sometimes how you feel like you need to get a razor blade to give yourself those extra inches at either side. Wow. It was one of those ones. But the idea came and I, I text you straight away. I didn't even wipe. I just text you straight away. And I said, this is, this, is the, this is the idea going forward, Chris. How do you feel about it? That's good to know. And you were happy That's with it. To know. I'm happy with it. I, I, like, I like to think you were bashing your head against your, your fifth spreadsheet. So... You know, I, th- I thought you would be up for it because you said you were having a busy ass day, and I knew you'd just be like, "Yeah, whatever." I think I was actually walking the dog at that point because I hadn't taken a lunch break, so I had ah, right. the poor little bugger was you know crossing his legs. Ah, right. So, so yeah, that's that's going to be the thing going forward. It's still going to be in the regular feed. It's still going to be there. There's still going to be the numbering up. This is still episode fifty three. Uh, it's just that it's going to be called Indie Talk, and that's how you're going to be able to differentiate from the normal episodes to the episodes that are going to have. An interview and some pimpage. Exactly. So that that's all it is. We just want to shine the light on them a little bit more. But calling it the shine a light episode sounds really... It's a bit wordy. It sounds piss yeah. Yeah. So Indie Talks. Indie sits. Talks. And we may even squeeze in some Indiana Jones talk. Why not? Why not? If Short Round comes on. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'd speak to Short Round. Okay. But yeah. So... About the Goonies though. Yeah, pretty much. That, that's, really, you know, that, that was just... Irritating on Indiana Jones. Indy, 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 Indy. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Don't I know do exactly that. what you're saying. Don't do that. But yeah, as always, the little bit of pimpage, let's get that out of the way. You can find us on the Facebook and the Twitters at 365 Flicks Pod. You can message us on there and we will answer you back at some point. Maybe not straight away, but at some point. We're on some wicked ass networks. We're on the Tangent Bound Network, the Wicked Radio Network, the Geeky Antics Network Global. We're on nerdly.co.uk, we be geeks, and the hashtag pod and family on Twitter, mm-hmm. which is more of a community, and that's all the, that's all the pimpage out of the way, but I found a new podcast, and I told them I was going to mention it on this next episode. Oh. Uh, I found a new one on the pod and family, and it is, you know how we've been watching the TV show Frequency? Mm-hmm. They are a Frequency podcast, so wow. they do the episodic reviews. And it's really quite good. Right, okay. So I said I'd give them a shout out. Look for a Frequency TV pod. Uh, it's run by a production company called Barren Space. Uh, find them either way. If you're into the TV show, which I know you're kind of falling off a little bit. I wouldn't say it was falling off. I think just episode five kind of lost me a little bit because it was it has all... Its, it has its moments. It really has its yeah. moments. I, on the whole, I've been absolutely loving it. But on episode five, it just kind of... it was. Going here, there, and everybody yeah. where I just thought, uh, 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 I just kind of drifted out. Like so. my my thing with with TV shows about time travel is that I I am able to suspend my my disbelief as long as you have a set of rules and stick to that set of rules. Yes. Whereas this show plays fast and loose with their own set of rules, so I'm kind of like. There was eh. a moment in one of the episodes. I think this was what you told me had bugged you. Yeah, when, when she was pointing the gun at the guy. That, that was atrocious. And she had bruises and stuff. And then he disappears, and she's still pointing the gun at him. Yeah, yeah. And she's it, pointing the gun at nothing. You can't do stuff like that. No. Or, or even when she was like, she was searching for the missing person, and uh, one second she presses it, and then she refreshes it, and that person was found. They weren't actually missing. Mm-hmm. And I was sat there going, I don't know if it quite works like that, but you know. But anyway, have a listen to this podcast. They are um, there's two two uh, hosts, a man and a lady, and they are both really into the show. They go they go really deep into it. Uh, I suggest you just have a little listen, and uh, yeah. So I just I, I told them I was going to mention them. So what's it called? It's called Frequency TV Pod. So have a listen to that if you're into the show. Good, good. But, I have I have subscribed right now. Well done, welly welly done. But that is not why we're here tonight. No, it's not. We kind of we kind of tangented a little bit. We always do. We do. We, we do. do. Yeah. Um, so yes, we have got on the, the the first episode of Indie Talk. 
we have got another interview for you lovely people. Now, this is uh, an Irish guy, an Irish actor, an Irish writer and director. Um, his name is Owen Mackin. Now, uh, for you Americans, you will see him right now. Well, not, you know, at the moment on your TV screens. It's, it's on break. Is it on break? It's on break. They're waiting for series oh, the series. I, I beg your pardon. The series has, or the season has just finished. Uh, the TV show is called The Night Shift. It's on NBC, I believe. Yep. Uh, Owen stars in the show as Dr. Callahan. Yep. Dr. T.C. Callahan. Exactly. You will also see him very, very soon in Resident Evil The Last Chapter. Yep. And he has been in a, a ton of other things. He was in The Forest with. Uh, Oh, that was Game Nat- of Thrones. Natalie Dormer, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, that was actually quite good. I watched that. For you Brits out there who who are not familiar with the Night Shift because it's not it's not widely available in the we, UK. We have you it really... over here. Did you, what what channel did you said it was on um, the Sony, Sony channel? Sony yeah. channel. So you can find I it. I did have a look for it. Did I try and download an episode? I couldn't find it. No. For, you know, but there you go. Uh, Owen also starred in Merlin as Sir mm-hmm. Gwen. He was very very good in Merlin. Yeah, you liked him in that. I love I love that show. Yeah, that Merlin was, really was good. a good ass show. Mm. I mean, the BBC tends to make good ass shows, for the most part. Yeah, Merlin was good. I liked Merlin. But we were speaking to Owen about his upcoming movie, which uh, is actually out now in the US. You can find it on iTunes. iTunes, uh, any sort of downloading. Um, yeah, it's available on demand. Site, so if yeah. you if you've got a streaming VOD kind of thing, streaming app, I guess you would call it, mm. then. Chances are you're going to get Leopard on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kev and I have had a chance to watch Leopard. Yep. And I have to say, it is a just a great movie. Well, I think what we'll do is, once we've played the interview, we'll come back and we'll give out some of our thoughts. Let, let, let the man talk about his movie first, and then we'll come back and give our thoughts on Leopard a little bit, just to sort of round out the show. And I think that could probably just be the format going forward of Indie Talk. Just Let's do it, yeah. Just promote them, let them promote themselves, and then we'll, we'll promote them a little bit. Why not? But the movie is called Leopard. It's out on uh, iTunes, like we say, any other streaming app that you can find it. You will find it. It's a great little movie, and we all want you to watch it. Also, look, if uh, you're in the UK, uh, he said, I think he said it'll be out towards the end of this year. He's hoping that's right. Yeah, Yeah. that's what they're aiming for. So if you're in the UK, keep an eye out for it. We will let you know. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is subscribe to our Facebook page, and we will let you know when it's available in the UK. Definitely. Because we're good like that. We are good like that. We are very good like that. Giving our time to these people to talk about their movies. Exactly. I know we said they were giving their time, but we, we kind of give our time as well. But we absolutely love it. Owen couldn't have been a nicer guy. We had a little bit of technical issues here and there. But, I mean, he was so accommodating for us. And, and just the man was a, he was a genius. He, he was, was just really, really nice he was. guy. And it helps that he's Irish because they can talk. Well, <laughs> you know, as, as you said to, to Lance in the Pegasus Bridge episode, let's work for us. Exactly. So we'll do that now. We'll play the interview. And we'll Go for it, my friend. Come, Go for it. Come back at the end. This is a story about a man and a woman. They had two children, two boys. Their mother wasn't a very good mother. Their father was a hard man. And he beat her. And he beat his boys too. But one day, she was gone. One of the boys left his only brother. He needed to find out what happened to her. Haven't had any trouble from him in a long time. Not since you've been gone, anyway. Why did you come back? Why did you really come back? She my little brother. I want an apology. An apology and a confession. I loved you. Tell me about love. What do you know? Why did you leave me? Tell me. Did you kill her then? Or did she really just drown? So how's it been going today? Good, good. Just, just, just been just a working way. Just now I'm in the plane, a plane a spot of tennis. Nice. Uh, and now I'm, I'm having a chat with you guys. Yeah, yeah down in Venice. You ever, you ever heard of paddle tennis? It's like a, a Spanish game that's, I guess, half tennis, half table tennis, I guess. Nice. So there's a bunch of courts that... Huh? No, I've never heard of that one. No, <laughs> it's good fun, man. It's, it's like it's like if you're crap at tennis, you can basically play paddle tennis. And if you're deadly <laughs> tennis, you'd be deadly, you'd be deadly at paddle tennis. You know. That sounds cool. Yeah. Well, I, I am crap at tennis, so I might have a go at that. Aye. That sounds easy. <laughs> yeah, to but that, 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 that that's kind of why I play it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't have that in Berwick, Bunswood. I see it. Okay. Well, where are you where are you guys at? 
We're, we're in uh, we're in Berwick upon Tweed. It's on the the border, the English border with Scotland. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Right on the border. Right on the border. That's <laughs> a nice little town. <laughs> right on the border. Right. We'll see. It's obviously quite cold right there. Right. It's it's. it's uh, I'm in LA at the moment, and it's it's part of the reason why I like being out here is I don't have to deal with the Irish and get basically Scottish winters anymore. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, but it's. Uh, Freezing cold and pitch black at the moment, so nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, that's that's the one. What we're go- what we're going to do is we've got a few questions here. Just uh, going to speak about the the movie first of all. Then we're you know we'll have a crack about uh, with, you know about sort of night shift. Uh, yeah, of course, Danny yeah. asked you about Merlin because I loved Merlin. <laughs> uh, oh, did you? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. I loved Merlin, man. It was great. It was a great show. Um, so I tell you what. Yeah. First of all, this what this won't go on the podcast because we don't want to spoil it for anyone. But holy shit, that movie is good. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, well, yeah geez, I'm glad you liked it. Thanks for watching it for a start. I, so, I yeah, loved it. I mean, it. I, I was uh, I was watching it earlier on, and the the part at the end of the movie where Tom is in the, the strip club and yeah. Yeah. his mother, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was watching it with my hands over my face. It was, oh, it was so hard yeah. to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, 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 it's not it's not a comfortable piece. It's pretty not the kind of piece. It's not the kind of film you want to watch with your mom or something. You know? Definitely not. <laughs> no, and it, it's definitely it's definitely not a date movie. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. I don't know. In some circles, it could be considered a date movie. That's not the kind yeah, of circle I want to travel. Yeah, we might want to mention those circles on right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I didn't want to mention that on there because we don't want to spoil it for anyone. So. But I, I just wanted to say that because it was great. I, I I do really appreciate that because we've had a it's it's been it's been a it's been a long old road getting a release. So when we still haven't got a release in, in the UK and Ireland yet, but we're hoping to do that before Christmas released anyway in January. And it's uh so yeah, it's one of those ones in indie film when you, when you can get it out there and people can see it. That's kind of you know that's half the battle. Yeah, well, that's the main battle. So so yeah, and I'm, it's it's really it's um, really nice to hear that you that you watch it and like it. So appreciate that. No worries, no, no, worries. no problem at all. <laughs> Right, so do you want to start? Or? Yeah, let's go. Let's go for it, yeah. Okay, so we are joined right now by Owen Mackin, who is an actor, he is a writer, he is a producer, he is a director, he's a busy, busy man. <laughs> uh, Owen uh, currently stars in the hit US medical drama, The Night Shift, but tonight he's here to talk about his new movie, Leopards. Yeah. Owen, welcome to 365 Flex. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, mate. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You are very, very welcome. This is a massive pleasure to speak to you. It certainly is, it certainly is. We watched uh we watched Night Sh- um, we watched Leopard earlier on today, Owen, and uh we absolutely loved it. Fantastic movie. I, I I I'm I'm really glad to hear that. I'm really glad it it's a movie that myself and Tom um we 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 put a lot of work into it in terms of they came one of those one of those projects that that we just like you call it a passion project in a way because it's two characters you really wanted to play, and we we worked really hard to kind of get it to where it is and 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 make it and get it released. So it's kind of a it's really nice and yeah, it's it's one of those ones that we just we just really want people to see and it's really nice and people like it you now. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what did uh, so is this Tom Hopper? Yeah. Right. So what, was it uh, the two of you? What sort of came up with the movie the, the idea for the movie together was well, it, it it was actually we actually shot uh, we actually shot Leopard during when we were shooting Merlin season 5 actually we, they, we had a week off from filming because we shot for 8 months in season 5 of Merlin we had a week off and for that week off we had 8 days uh, and we shot for 7 of those in Ireland um, for, for Leopard and then the minute we finished Merlin 5 days after we finished the season uh, we went straight back down we went straight to Dublin and we, and we finished the rest of the movie um, so yeah, we shot the whole thing for 13 days and we, we kind of pulled it all together I, I wrote it for Tom because he wanted to play a character uh, that was very different to what he plays on Merlin and Black Sails so it's, he's, a, he's got a lot of emotional and kind of um, he's got a lot of issues in it he's kind of similar to Lenny from Mice and Men and then uh, it kind of the gestation of it kind of evolved from that scene you were just talking earlier about which is the end of the movie and that's just decided we wanted to work together and make this project and then, and then as I wrote it it just became this really interesting piece that we, we both just adored so yeah yeah I mean you, you could tell straight away when the movie started that you you two you have great chemistry together oh, yeah. you know in, in the scenes that you have together yeah yeah we you know it's, it's funny I, I like working with people you know not all the time but when you work with people who you've who you already know and you trust you kind of have a there's a certain ease 
uh, towards acting with each other, which which which, which and when and you were friends as well, it it kind of gives you. I, I think it gives you a certain chemistry, and we just we just like working together. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so that definitely comes across. And I know. Oh, um, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I know you. You're saying that the the story kind of just sort of when you started writing it, it just sort of came about itself. But where did the initial sort? Because it's 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 very it's a deep deep movie, and there's a lot to it, and it's. But where did the initial concept of this movie come from? Well, it, it, it came it came from me asking Tom what, what kind of character he'd like to play, <laughs> and, and he and and, and yeah, honestly, and he said this type of character he'd like to play, and and he mentioned many of my men, and, and Steinbeck is my favorite author, so I, yeah. I, I love East of Eden and, and I, the, the book, and I love Grapes of Wrath, and then Paris, Texas, one of my favorite movies. And so I just decided to start writing these characters started writing these characters these two brothers and then naturally it just kind of happened that I was like okay I can shoot in Ireland because I know those people and then the movie evolved or by began to explore what would make a character the way Tom wanted to play and how that would happen so then this idea came about having this uh, these these family issues with, 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 with the, the mother and father of these, these two brothers and the two of them being um, being separated from each other and and Tom's character being uh, basically a loner and, and and dealing with a lot of emotional and, and I guess you call them mental issues as well. And that's kind of, it just kind of evolved, you know, from these, these two characters, which you decided they should be. And he'd always tease me about being Irish and being an alcoholic just as a joke. So I was <laughs> like, all right, well, that, that's the character I'm going to write in the movie then, cool. So, and, and we just tried to figure out why would these characters be like this? And, and that's, that's kind of where it evolved from. So it just kind of became its own entity kind of thing just sort of wrote itself yeah yeah it was just one of those ones I just when, you, when you're writing stories cause sometimes it just kind of it seems to, I, I, I love the ending in Paris, Texas um, and I read about that a lot when uh, uh, when that movie was was, uh, was written for Heidi and Staunton they actually just wrote the end of that movie the, the night before <laughs> and uh yeah, because they because they well they 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 couldn't film a lot of it, so a lot of it became this monologue. And then I just love the idea of the of the movie being the end. Having to be, it, it, I wanted it to be Tom's story as opposed to being my character's story. I thought that was more interesting. The character struggles socially to be the one who has to face up to these 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 uh, these issues and putting him in this situation. And I just found that the, I just found the idea of the movie ending and this this finality. I, I love that when it, when a movie has has a scene. At the end of the story, where everything comes to pass and it, and it, and it really grabs you, so it was, a lot of it was trying to build a movie up towards an ending, as opposed yeah. to having a story where you get to it and then the end, you don't know what the ending is. I kind of knew what I wanted the ending to be as I was writing the story, you know. Sure, sure. It certainly, it certainly did grab you at the end, definitely. <laughs> so, um, f- filming filming an island was was that a conscious decision that you made as to as part because it comes across as very much part as its own character in the movie. Was that something that you yeah. consciously did, or? Well, yeah. Well, it, it was. You know, it's funny because I think sometimes you know, you know, when you, I guess you're probably the same in, in Scotland. Like, there's a lot of beauty in, in Scotland and in Ireland. Yeah. There's also a lot of kind of darkness there attached to kind of the weather and and the, and the, the, the landscape. And sometimes I find you, you travel and you want to you want to kind of the reason why we shot there. I wanted it very much to be that the like like in Paris, Texas, um, there's a lot of stuff of Harry Dean Stanton walking through the, the desert, and it very much becomes a character in the film. So I wanted this to be the same way. I wanted to get it to for the landscape and the kind of the, the there to be that sense of emptiness and for the very much for the Irish, uh, <coughs> the parts of Claire and the rest of Ireland to be a, a character in the film, you know, and to be something that that affected the mood of the characters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was the opening shot of the the dog yeah. lying, in the, <laughs> lying, uh, in the, yeah. lying in the water. <laughs> and one of the things that struck me right away, right away as soon as the movie started, was the score yeah. and the cinematography in the yeah. movie. And it was... It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. So, was it? Was this something? I mean, obviously you directed it. Was this something you had like a, a hands-on role with with, with the score? Yeah. And what have you? What, 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 yeah. Well, there's an Irish band called Evora who who who, who, who they play live in a pub, and then their songs are used for the end of it. So I already I already wanted to use their music in it, uh, specifically those two songs. But I've got this. I know this great musician called Kevin Wims. And he scored a couple of my, my films before. So when I wrote the movie, I, I said it to him and told him what I wanted. See, he was he was playing around with stuff before he even shot. So I'd be sending him stills and, and moments of scenes, and he started writing straight away. And we discussed the idea of, of getting a 
I sent him a couple of soundtracks and, and explained kind of what I wanted and uh, and we spoke about it. There's this be- Paris, Texas, funny enough, just Alpha is this beautiful soundtrack where it's all like a good, beautiful kind of slide guitar. So Kev was trying to kind of get a similar feel but make it far more um, far more Irish uh, sounding, I guess. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so he, he, he's just a genius. So he just, he just wrote this incredible score and he'd send me these pieces and I'd be like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much incredible. So, <laughs> There was a moment. There was a moment. Uh, no spoilers or anything, but there was a moment where uh, where your character Owen and uh, Jack Rayner's character uh, you were having a fight mm-hmm. next to. I think it was a post box or something like yeah. that. And the camera kind of yeah. he sort of pushed pushed your character over the wall, and the camera kind of pans mm-hmm. round as, as he's beating the crap out of you, basically. <laughs> and that was just perfect. It was amazing. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, I wanted to. Well, with it, I very, I very much wanted it to kind of. I, I want each each shot to kind of be like a photograph or, or probably that's the, that's the you know the idea or that was a hope anyway. And, and so with stuff like that, when we're doing a fight scene, I didn't want it to be a stereotype. I think I wanted you to feel detached from it and only see part of it. Yeah. You know, and just see part of the altercation and kind of. And I think it it, it was more interesting visually to play it that way. You know, and it kind of fit with the with the tone of it. Definitely. I mean, it looked great. It really did look great. So w- one one uh, one thing I wanted to ask you on was that, that it's a very, very w- tense movie with, the, as I said, you know, yeah. the score and the cinematography. So has your interest in your degree in psychology been a, a strong influence in, in, in creating a movie like that? Yeah, it has because I'm kind. Of, I, I I like. I used to love a lot of French cinema and this, this Polish director called Kieslowski who did um. There's this beautiful movie called A Short Film About Killing and, and the Three Colors Trilogy. And uh, and I was fascinated by how, how the, you know, I think that the music and the visual, uh, they should go hand in hand. And, and so I, I find that, that you, I'm just, because I study psychology, I guess, you, you kind of, you want to create something that also, that the characters are feeling. So I did that with stuff with the score in terms of moments that goes into Tom's head of the sound effects and and, and they kind of get a feeling of what happened to the characters. So cause I think that very much it's all part of the same tapestry. So you're trying to, you know, trying to create something that kind of complements it both from a visual sense and, and from a, uh, a music sense, you know. If you, if you let me, I'll just bang on for ages. That's all right. I'll tell you what, we could listen for ages. We could listen for ages. You, you know, the um, the there's a scene towards the end of the movie. Obviously, we're, we're trying to stay away from spoilers and all this, but there's a, there's a particular scene where the two brothers are out in the the woods at the dead of night sort of thing. And uh, I was just wondering, like, sort of, that is a very tense moment. It's a very tense scene in the whole film. What's that like from writing that to then having yourself and um, Tom act that out on on screen? Like, how how do you go about making that happen? What's the process? Uh... Jeez, I, 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 don't, I don't really know. It, it, it's when I write something, I kind of, I kind of see it in my head. So then, I, before we shot the scene, I had, I had the shots in my head composed. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd been to the forest. We knew where I wanted to be. Um, but w- w- to be honest, the reason why, like, with people like Tom Hopper and Helen Pearson and then and Jack and, yeah. and and Michael Yarra and stuff, the idea for me with, with this film is, I, I, I felt like my characters are there to help them. Yeah. Because uh, so I end, so I end up kind of trying to create what's best for Tom's character in the scene, how to do it, and that's how I focus on it. And then that let then what Tom brings something that I didn't expect to the scene because he's brilliant. And then he brings something, and then you kind of let the scene, uh, you know, the, the, the scenes all follow to a large extent how we how we flesh them out, how we hope to. But then, you know, we just create this the environment to let Tom, to let the other actors do their thing, really, you know, and then then hopefully something something beautiful happens. But you never really fully know until you've shot the scene to a large extent. You know, you, you think it's going to work, you hope it's going to work, but it's only when you do it that you really know if it is. You know, I think with a, with an actor of Tom's sort of intensity, you kind of you kind of you, you know that's going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, there is that. That's true. Yeah. No, I mean, I wasn't worried about it. You know. No, no. <laughs> it's just in that. There's a few scenes in the movie where Tom does get a real chance to sort of shine, and that is one of them. And and it just kind of. Reading that on the on paper, sort of when you're writing it, how sort of how he would get himself ready for that, and how you would help him get ready for that. So yeah, that answers the question. Yeah, well, well, well there's a the thing. I mean, I, at the end of that scene, I think I think we hold on Tom for almost probably forty five seconds. Yes, I think at the end of that scene, <laughs> very much. You so. know, 
yeah, because because it's his story, you know, and, yeah. and it's the culmination of the, of that story for that character, and, and there's a whole sea change for that the character's thought process. But again, when, when you write that, you don't necessarily write because you're meant to write like a page a minute. But you don't necessarily write a full page describing what's going on in Tom's head as you're kind of holding in this moment on it. Yeah. You know? So it, it, it's some some of that stuff happens whereby you know the scene might only be written as two pages long or something, but then it becomes a four minute scene because of some beautiful stuff with himself and Rebecca Nice, who is was wonderful. And you kind of uh, you, you, what happens becomes you know, more interesting than, than what it was in the page or becomes yeah. longer or you just kind of, you know. Makes your job easier as well. <laughs> 100%. Oh, yeah, just tell you, yeah. And, but, you know, it also goes back to the score because Kev wrote this beautiful score, so he he would write it according to the edit, but we would do rough edits and he'd send me songs and then he might have sent me a piece that's two minutes long and the, the first cut of the scene might have been three minutes or a minute and a half and sometimes I'd end up kind of cutting part of the scene based off the music because of like this is such a beautiful piece it changes mm. the scene you know yeah definitely definitely one, one of the one of the questions we do have is that this this movie is coming out now uh, it's going to be on all the streaming th- uh, sites and th- uh, in, only in America just now I'm sure though yeah yeah it's only very America but we're, hope, we're, hope, we're going to have release now in the UK hopefully just before Christmas just after yeah in well, the, the middle of December is the plan well, the, the, th- the thing we were going to ask was that you rec- you just said before that you were filming it while you were doing Merlin season five, so that would have been back yeah. in 2013 that you made this movie. It, it was. We originally shot it four years ago. Then it took yeah. a year to get the edit and the soundtrack right, and after that we we did about a year of just doing doing a few festivals, and then and then it took about a year and a half with a sales company and distribution to get it out. It's just with an indie, it, we just had a few hiccups in the way with with various deals and stuff, and it's just one of those ones where trying to get a cinema release we almost did and it's one of those ones it's a hard one with indie films because um you have to be looking at the right time for you have to get lucky with the distribution agents to have the right space in their slate you know there's a lot of cinemas that they're only playing bigger films and, and the smaller the smaller films are harder to get in cinemas than they were 10 years ago you know yeah definitely yeah. i mean the, the only reason we kind of wanted to bring that up is that we when we've been doing some of these interviews, we, we've been picking more the independent because that's sort of what we want to focus on. And we've heard that yeah. quite quite a bit recently that it like when you go independent, it does take a bit longer. So I just wanted to, to ask. I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's fine. I mean, that, that, that's just the nature of the beast. I mean, yeah. we, we made we made this money based off a, a, an Indiegogo campaign. It was actually funded by fans of Merlin, you know, and that's the only reason we were able to make it. And and. So in a way, this 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 film was not really this film was for us was like trying to create something we wanted people to watch and they were proud of being a part of. But when you're making an indie film, you, you kind of know that's what's going to happen. And, and even people who make movies for one or two million, they might only play for in a cinema for a week, and if no one goes, then you know, that, and that's just that's just the nature of it. But that's why that's why you have streaming sites and DVD and Amazon and Netflix and all that stuff. And that's how you know you hope people will will find these movies. You know, definitely. I mean. That's 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 just sort of lifeblood with that kind of thing, isn't yeah, it? You know? yeah. yeah, it seems yeah. to be a lot of what we're hearing recently. Well, we, we were recently speaking to these guys. Uh, it's, a, it's a British production company who are trying to get a war movie made, and they were speaking about, you know, the the, the, the fans giving up their time for free to yeah. come and help make the movie. You know, with a, a movie like that, you need sure. a lot of extras and what have you. So they, you know, they were sort of going through the same kind of thing as uh, as you there. You know, mm. but the fans of Merlin coming together to to help get the movie made that's that's fantastic. Uh, well, well, they they were brilliant to us, you know, and then uh, and then a lot of them came came down to Ireland and were extras were extras in some of it as well, you know, and, and that's kind of how we were able to make this movie at the time because neither, neither of us had any money to make a movie. Um, so that that was that was the only way we were able to really make it, you know. So that, that was, you know, it, it, it the crowdfunding thing is, is, and having people come and help you with these things is, is kind of the lifeblood of it, you know. Yeah, that's that that is really really cool. I mean, a lot of people, myself included, loved Merlin. It was uh, <laughs> it was a great show. Yeah. So what's it like well, being being part of that? You know, it must be pretty uh, crazy with the, you know, the. Well, well, I, well I, to be honest with you, I, I, I find Leopard to be, to be, uh, to be a big part of Merlin, really, because I wouldn't have made it without meeting people at Merlin, like one of yeah. the sound designers. The sound designer, Nicholas Chip Paul, was a sound designer in Merlin, and I met him through Merlin. He did the sound for us. You know, I, obviously, I met Tom on Merlin, and, and through Merlin, I met some great people, like I had Tommy and, and Colin and Bradley and stuff. We're all friends, and. Adam Biles and JD, we met a lot of wonderful people, and it was great fun. And all the fans have been great to us. I mean, it's it's a 
I didn't really expect him. And when I just did one episode of Merlin and be in it for two and a half years and, and kind of <laughs> meet all these people who enjoyed it the way they do, you know, but it's great because it kind of people connect with it. And it's, it's, and it's so much fun. So for people to still care about it and talk to us about it three years later is, is a real privilege, you know? Well, it's still, it's still a, a massively, massively popular yeah. show. I, I did read before yeah. uh, that there's a lot of Sir Gwen fan fiction <laughs> out there. So you have you yeah, read any yeah, of the fan there's, there's, fiction? There's a bunch of that, yeah. No, I haven't read any of the fan fiction. No, man, I just see a lot of cool. I'm not the fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so would would you would you then go back to to the character then if the if the opportunity came up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we, we talked about that. We, we we were even trying to figure out how we could even do our own do our own spin off or something. You know, I mean, we definitely would. But I, I did. It's it's that's very much dependent on the BBC and, and yeah. time and stuff, you know. And and the problem is then is everyone's at a contract and moves on to different jobs and stuff, you know. And then like I'm 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 with the, the night shift now at the moment, and we're, we're looking to do a season four. So it's very much you'd be trying to get everybody to be free, and that'd be a difficult one. Even Anthony Head and Richard and Colin and stuff, they're all doing yeah. different things, so it'd be a hard one to pull off again, you know. Well, Colin's been busy doing the the fall with Gillian Anderson and. and... JB Doran. Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 in, he's in busy doing everything. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, he he was great in that. Did you watch that show? I di- I didn't know. I, I I it's on my list. I've got a list of about uh, ten shows. I need to yeah. watch, so I'm <laughs> planning to sit down and binge watch it. You know, it's a hard show to watch at times. It's uh, so certainly season one anyway. <laughs> when uh, when Jamie yeah, Jamie no, Doran is going about being a serial killer, that's uh, you've got some pretty hardcore scenes in there. So, I mean, I mean, I, 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 as you can tell from my, from my sensibilities, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very much sounds it. Very much sounds it. We've we've seen leopard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with that said, like um, the Merlin was on the BBC, and the BBC is like a, it's like a huge thing over over in Britain, and Merlin was a massive thing. How how different is it being on a big show like Merlin to then being on a big show on NBC in America? It's kind of the same thing, really. You know, it, 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 you're doing the same thing, it's just just with just with people with American accents. You know, <laughs> um, it's it's it, it's it's a little bit bigger, but it's it's a different type of show. Um, uh, it, it, the the Merlin, I think there's there's a, a more in, there's a fan base for Merlin that's kind of more heavily immersed in the story um, than there is for Night Shift. You know, it's a different audience, and and it's it's a different type of show to play from where a purely you know, from my point of view, just acting in it, it's 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 a lot of fun. It's just playing something different, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a definitely there's a different fan base, that, you know. But I guess that's the kind of difference. Really. But how does it feel having the title Heartthrob thrown on you? Yeah, well, only people like you say that to me. You know what I mean? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't know what that means, then, but I mean, I, no, I'm, if, when if I was... that's the case, that's the case, and that can help me in life somehow. That'd be great, but I don't know if it does. Well, you almost had my wife on the call tonight as well because we watched an episode of uh, The Night Shift the other day and she was like, him? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you almost had oh, her in here as well. So. Hey, man, listen, I, I, listen, I, I'll take that. If, if that's the work for people and, that, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that's fantastic for me, super. I'm not the one who makes this character or writes it. That's great. <laughs> I'll take it. So when, when the role of, of uh, Dr. Callahan, it's Dr. Ha- Dr. Callahan, yeah? Yeah. When the role of that yeah. came around and was offered to you, what, what was it about the role that made you think, hell yeah, I'll go for that? Uh, well, it was because I wanted to do something that wasn't in a cape and and and, and, <laughs> and armor, you know. It, it, no, it was actually because the script was really good, and I, I thought the character was really interesting, especially for a TV show because it was the ex- you know I got to play an American uh, war vet who's got PTSD, and that was interesting. So don't the Irish don't the history of kind of uh, the military in Ireland is. is, is vastly different to that in America so I, I had to learn an awful lot and meet people and do some research and I found that really interesting and I, I just thought the script was great and the, the, the show's a lot of comedy to it as well as the kind of uh, the medical stuff and there's a lot of chaos in it which I love so I just thought it was really interesting How do you get on filming those scenes with the, the gory scenes? I mean it, it sounds like it's not going to be that, that, but... uh, It's good fun that's just like Halloween really isn't it? Just like know? playing in the sandpit <laughs> Just, just, just like Halloween, everyone's dressed up with their chest open, and they just want you to do it. Oh, yeah, you, we have some med- we have a lot of medical advisors who teach us all yeah. that stuff, you know. So you learn how to do it, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's not so bad. So the show's been doing really, really well, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's getting away. Yeah, we're doing another season fourteen. Well, hopefully, we're finding out soon. So you know, it's, uh, can't complain about that. 
Yeah, I was I was looking, you know, behind it because I don't think it's widely available in the UK. It's not no, on. We, we I struggle to get. Uh, it to yeah, I was I was having it's a look for it, it before. It's on, it's on the it's on the Sony channel in the UK. Uh, channel, it, right? it, it's one of those ones that hasn't really hit the UK in Ireland. It does it does all right, but it's kind of more. It's big in South America. It's big in America and Canada, Germany. You know, it's abroad. It, it just hasn't been that kind of show that we've been in the UK or Ireland yeah. as much. You know, so. That's true, because um, you know, yeah. most shows translate over. You know, your yeah. house and your nurse Jackie and all that kind of thing, so... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't sell it. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when will you... When do you expect to find out if you've got a season four, then? Oh, well, we'll know in the next couple of weeks, yeah. hopefully. That's, 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 that's what they're telling us, so yeah. Uh, so, so Resident Evil, the final yeah. chapter, is in post-production right now. So how did yeah. you find that on, on, the, on the set of Resident Evil? Oh man, I, I had a blast. It was just, um, uh, yeah. I mean, Paul, Paul and me are just super chill. So it was just kind of, um, we were in South Africa, which, which, which is pretty awesome. But, but it, it was kind of like being in Halloween all the time. Yeah. Because um, it's, it's just, well, there's just there's all these people dressed as zombies everywhere. Like half the stuff is just people and zombies chasing you and, and stuff blowing up beside you. I and mean, there's these crazy wrecked concrete buildings that are crumbling and, and it, it was just it was just nuts it was like being in a video game it's great fun it sounds amazing it actually really sounds amazing so did you get to no one spoilers or anything but did you get to do any big action set pieces or anything yeah I got to do some cool stuff I mean they did they, they had so many stunts going on we'd we, we stuff like you know hanging off these bridges and stuff and kind of and firing nail guns and all sorts of stuff yeah it, it was um they let me do quite quite a good bit of man stuff as well, so it was, it was pretty cool. But just yeah, there's just running away, stuff blowing up, jumping off bridges, all this type of stuff. Jumping into uh, jumping into lakes. It was pretty, it was pretty badass actually. <laughs> just basically, when you're a kid and you want to be an actor, yeah. it's every every kid's dream pretty, to do a movie like that. Pretty much for that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, what was it like then going into? Uh, I mean, obviously you've 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 uh, done Merlin. Uh, so, what was it like going into a franchise with such a pure cult following, yeah. like like Resident Evil? Well, well, I, I don't I mean. I mean, I used to always play play the computer games, you know, um, and I found them found them hard to play because they're just you know you get stuck in that, that house. And the first ones, and it just get, gets gets kind of quite tense. But um, the only thing I've experienced so far was in New York Comic Con and seeing how much people love it, and and that that, that was pretty awesome. Um, but until it comes out, I won't really be able to, to tell you. Yeah. To see the reaction of it. The the reaction always seems to be good for those movies. Anyway. It does. It does. It's one of those. It's one of those movies or, or f- groups of movies uh, that. Yeah, that that uh, actually I tell you what well, one one of the movies had the premiere in Berwick upon Tweed. It did, didn't it? Yeah. It was the last uh, one. No way. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think it was yeah, the last yeah. one. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, I saw this one a couple of weeks ago back with Paul, and they showed me a preview of it, and it, I got to be honest, just it's pretty, pretty fucking badass. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think it's, it's. I think people are gonna like it. Awesome. I think. I think so. I think so. Yeah. But um, I mean, yeah. it, it's all it's all fine running around, getting chased by zombies, and jumping in lakes, and having fun action set pieces. But working with Mila Jovovich, I mean, come on, there can't be much better than that. Yeah, no, she's great, man. She's really chill. She's very chill, and she, you know, and she's been doing this. She's been doing the Resident Evil stuff for a while, so she kind of has all those stunts down. And, and even though she's had a baby, like about nine months before we started filming, <laughs> um, she she's got a wicked sense of humor, man. She just doesn't stop going. She's she's just, and of course, you know, she's she's really over it. I mean, she's she's she was a sex symbol, and she's a sex symbol. So she's just it's just when you when you work with someone like that, it's just super super cool. It's great fun, you know. She always comes across as a tall badass. Definitely. Oh, I, oh, I guess. Yeah, she, 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 is, she is a badass, yeah. Did, did, so did, you, did you have the, the Fifth Element poster on your wall at any point? Because I certainly did. I didn't, <laughs> no, no. And I, I can't remember if I did. I certainly wouldn't have told her. Actually, I <laughs> it's the sort of thing you could tell us, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's there a feeling then on the set? What's there a feeling of, like, last movie... Sort of blues no. or anything like that, or was or was it? No, 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 no. Because I mean, they, they, you never know. I mean, you never know what those things were. Not how how long. I mean, they say they're making last, but who knows? But no, because they're very much. They, Paul wants this movie to be very. It's just, it's a stand. It's the end of the the whole the whole six part movie sequence, but it's also a standalone movie on its own. Mm-hmm. I think far more than any of the previous ones, you know. And apart from the first one, I think this is the one that's that's most. Um, 
it got the strongest kind of uh, sense of it being a standalone movie. So it, uh, there was no sense of that. They just wanted to make a, Paul just wanted to make a really, really, really awesome movie. And yeah. I think he had the freedom with that to do that, so he did. Those are good movies. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, no, it's good fun. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. So, so uh, back to back to the directing and stuff. What have you on? Uh, so, have you got any more writing or directing projects on the horizon for you? Yeah, we got a couple. Of, I've got three, three a bunch of scripts I've written. There's one at the moment which we we're trying to get together for next year. It's a, a book I adapted called Here the Young Men, which is kind of um, I guess it's similar in vein to to Romper Stomper or Train Spotting, and <gasps> um, in terms of being about these these kids in Dublin at the end of Celtic Tiger in eighteen nineteen, and they're just out of school. It's a, it's a it's a kind of it's a heavy kind of commentary on on, on society and, and and TV violence and all that stuff. But also you know they're doing drugs and all that thing. It's a kind of age thing. It's quite quite visceral and blackly comic and dark and violent and, and edgy and it's um we're hoping to make that like we're, we're kind of spend the next nine months trying in pre-production hoping to shoot it next year so we'll see that that's the plan yeah good stuff <laughs> yeah that, that's uh, that yeah. sounds great man it really does and certainly from yeah. uh, fr- from leopards i mean i would watch i would <laughs> i would certainly watch the next one that you do that leopard was amazing <laughs> You're down. so well, what, yeah well this this, this, this will be about sorry what um, yeah, so just just uh, one one more time then. Just say, just tell yeah. everyone because we've got quite a lot of listeners in America. Uh, so tell everyone right now where can they get leopards? Where can they see leopard? Oh right, yeah, uh, you can get leopard right now on um, on Google Play and iTunes and Amazon. Um, yeah, they're available right now on, on those sites, most of the VOD sites. Awesome. Um, that's where you're going to get it. Yeah. Good stuff. And it, and it Sorry, can... I- it, yeah. co- it comes with a 365 seal of approval. It so. certainly does. <laughs> it certainly does, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I as as, the, as does everything, um, the the likes of... Uh, we, we watched uh, Merlin on the BBC. Me and my wife are now watching The Night Shift. I mean, you're you're a crack and actor, Owen, but you, your directing chops as well is something else. Like, is, is, did that, is that something that came easy for you, just... Um, you're, you're very kind. I appreciate that. Um, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I've always just tried to make things um, uh, in, in any way spare time. I just shot another short a couple of weeks ago with some buddies of mine, and I, I'm trying to end, end it that. And I've always just just tried to make uh, to make stuff in my spare time, be, be it shorts or, or indie films or, or, or documentaries and stuff. And that's how I learn, you know. Um, so I've learned from from actually kind of working with people and, and seeing what listening on set. Seeing how certain people like to be directed, and then then making a lot of indie stuff myself, myself, and seeing the mistakes. But when you do it yourself, you can be free to do that. And I think that's a it's an important way of learning about stuff. So I just like making things. So if it works, and I, I don't know if I know what I'm doing yet. I'm just trying to hopefully try and just create stories, and some of it works and great. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so so do you take when you're directing or when you're approaching a project? Do you take inspiration from any particular director or writer or anything like that? Uh, not particularly. No, I, mean, I, I read a lot of uh, a lot of cinematographer magazines and stuff like that. And I used to read, I used to watch a lot of you know Mike Figgis used to do a lot of interviews with David Lynch and stuff, and I, and I like reading about that. But I think essentially, from my opinion anyway, it comes down to the kind of style of of, of movies you want to make in terms of the shot choices and stuff, and then it's just kind of what. I think acting is very subjective. Some people think, you know, some people like watching certain actors and certain things, and obviously it depends. Like if you're making Ash versus Evil Dead, you want your actors to act a di- different way than if it's in like a Ken Diesel movie, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I guess it just kind of is, you know, it, it's you have to go with your gut on on you get people who can who can act and know what to do, and you let them do their thing. And if you want something specific, I guess I just kind of go with my gut about this is kind of what I want and hope it works, and you know. Um, but I mean, so, what what, what you're no, saying about the the trust factor as well is when you've got actors in there that you you know so well, like like Tom, that you can trust that yeah. you say action and they're going to just act their hearts out, kind of thing. Well, yeah. Well, with here the young man, which is the, 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 the which I was just mentioning, you know, a lot of that's dependent on getting the right cast. And if you get the right cast, and, and I, like, I think I've got the script right, you know, if if, if that's the case, and you know, I get the right cast, then then hopefully, you know. Um, they'll be able to kind of bring it alive, you know, and then you just have to just kind of tweak it to kind of get the pacing right or to get kind of an arc um, from the character to the story. So you're kind of, you know, it's a collaboration. You're kind of trusting. Same way when I'm acting something, you want to be trusted to 
be able to bring something to it, you know, and then the director's there just to kind of guide you along the way and tweak little bits and pieces to get the performance of the scene sure. uh, in moments. But you kind of just want to trust the people you got in it, you know. So it's like it's like with Resident Evil, you and McGregor bring you, you and McGregor and Robert Carlyle make make that movie their own because of what they do with the characters, you know, and and, and that's kind of what you're looking for. And and on, and on that note, you you mentioned um, one director in particular there. Now, it's been a long time since I saw Mike Figgis. He was in Leopard, actually, but I had to cut a scene uh, because, my, I did, yeah, he was, he was, uh, I, I did a movie with Mike just before we made Leopard, so he came along to, to six months later and he, he, was, he played a little cameo and he actually wrote a trumpet piece for the movie because I'd originally wanted some of the score to be a little bit, uh, it's kind of got this kind of French saxophone kind of style going through it. And I had this other musician called Jerry Fish, who was this Irish guy who was great. He did a trumpet piece as well, and he, and he did a scene. And, and we had Tom, Tom's character when he's actually in Dublin. There's a load of stuff we cut from the movie. But Tom's character sees him on the street and listens to the music, and he kind of tells him, uh, gives him some advice. But And, and it, it was quite a nice little scene. It just didn't fit with the movie at the time, because when, when they got to Dublin, just with the pacing and everything, it just, it just slowed it down. This was a three-minute scene. And three minutes can end up being a long time in the movie, so we just <laughs> yeah. keep it in. It was a really nice scene, and Mike was great, and I didn't want to, but it just just for the for the for the, for the pacing of the movie, I had to cut it along with a bunch of stuff, you know. So sure, sure, sure. What it was. These things happen. <laughs> well, uh, you got you got to cut yeah. some stuff, I suppose, eventually. Well, not if you're Zack Snyder. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't start on that. Don't start on that. God, we'll be here till midnight. Um, so. <laughs> Owen, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. This has been an absolute pleasure. We cannot yes, recommend the movie that. enough to everyone. Uh, we, we thoroughly enjoyed the movie, and just, again, thank you so much for coming on the show, Owen. Well, thank you guys for having me. Thanks for asking some really interesting questions about it, about filmmaking. It's been, it's been fun chatting to you guys. Appreciate it. We, we, we do try. We do try. <laughs> <laughs> we try not to fire the, uh, the usual questions at you. No, 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 for sure. No, it's been it's been good. You make me think, which is great. So I appreciate that. <laughs> well, that's that, that's quite a good compliment. Uh, one thing we do on our show is we we have a section that we call the three six five picks, where we're making a list of three hundred and sixty five movies that we believe that you should watch, not that you must watch, but that you should watch. Uh, would you possibly be kind enough to maybe throw a film on that list? Oh yeah, um, I, I I think a short film about killing. Yeah, a short film about killing. Yeah, it's by Christoph Kieslowski, the guy who did Three Colors Blue and, and Three Colors Red, Three Colors right, White, yeah. and uh, and I I love that movie. I think it's, I think it's brilliant from a stylistic point of view. It's a uh, it, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a feature film. It's not it's not a short film, but it, it's a it's a beautiful film. It really, is. it's it's very it's very dark. But it's very powerful. The strange thing is, we ask this question of most of our guests now. Nobody ever puts their own film on the list. That's true. Oh, shit. Okay, well, yeah, you, know, you could obviously put Leopard on there as well. Yeah, okay. Don't, don't worry, we'll be adding that on anyway. You know what? I am actually going to add, I, at some point, I will add that because I loved the movie. And not just blowing smoke here, but I actually genuinely did love the movie, Owen. So, fantastic job on the movie. Well, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. You're a gentleman. Thanks, man. That, 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 that means a lot. No problem at all. Absolutely no problem at all. <laughs> all right, lads. Well, listen, have a, have a good evening. Get some sleep because you guys are up late. And, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure. Until next time. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much, much John. John. Cheers, lads. Cheers, Thank man. You. Thank you. DC! DC! You okay? This whole kamikaze battlefield surgery is not going to fly here. There are going to be risks no matter what we do. We're the only one who can save that man. Thank you. The Night Shift, here on NBC. So that was Owen Mackin. Yeah. That was a cracking interview. It was. I loved speaking to him. It was great. I could have, I could have probably spoke to him for a longer. A yes, longer. I know, I know. It was so, It was some late nights. <laughs> it was some late nights. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of coffee. It was late nights. It was uh, shoddy connections. It was, it, it was great, though, and, and I'm so, like... Full, full disclosure, we, we ran out of time the first night and the man was so great to oblige as to phone us again the next night. So we got the rest of the interview done and, you know, what a star. That's all I've got to say, well, what a star he was. Definitely, definitely. 
So what did you think? Uh, let, let's do. We're not going to give any spoilers. Absolutely not, because yeah, was, we want people to. We want everybody to go out and look for this movie. You can find it on Facebook. It is uh, Leopard the film. I believe is the name of the Facebook page. Yes. yes. Uh, because there was a there was a movie called Leopard back in the sixties. I think nineteen sixty. I think oh, it right. came out. So if you Google it, you might not get it up on the screen. Ah. If you go onto Facebook or you, you can go to Twitter as well. If you go onto Twitter, it's at Leopard the film. And if you go to Facebook and search for Leopard, it will also come up. If you're struggling, just search for Owen Mackin and you'll you'll find it no problem. But the movie is available in America right now, as we said. Have a look on your iTunes, your Amazon. It'll it'll be there somewhere. Yep. And also, as we said, look for it in the UK very, very soon. Hopefully. 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 <laughs> and we like we say, if if you if you are struggling or if you want um a quick link to it or whatever. We we will try and oblige as much as possible. Just give us shout us on the on the Twitter or the Facebook. We're we're there for you. But let let's just have a little a little uh, sort of rundown of the the movie itself and what we thought. Uh, again, we're not going to jump into spoiler territory. Quite hard not to of this movie. But let's just. What was your general feeling on this movie? Like, what sort of give give everyone a little idea of what it's about, and then we'll jump into feelings. Um, well, it's it's uh, set. It's, it's about two English brothers in a town, a small village, even in Ireland. Uh, Owen Owen's character comes uh, returns to returns to the village where he, he you know he's he's left the village a long time ago. He's left his brother and his dad. His dad has died. He's returning to the village yeah. for his uh, you know to see his brother. And I think it's the reading of his dad's will, I believe. Yes. Um, so that's that's really the the premise of the movie. The the family is a little bit of a uh, sort of on the outs, you know, it's, sort of ostracised. Yes, that's right, the word yeah. I was looking for. Care, thank you. <laughs> um, I couldn't bloody think of the word there. Um, so they're not really widely regarded in the, in the local community. His dad was a bit of a a, a bit of a wronging, and he, his brother is is a little bit slow as well. Played yeah. by Tom Hopper, who puts in Tom just, Hopper, man. Uh, just. Tom, amazing Tom performance. Hopper, also another Merlin alumni. Yep. Uh, you can currently see him in Black Sails, which I know Blake from the History of Bad Ideas are. are he good does, fans. he does. He, that's one that's on Amazon Prime. Yes, that's on Amazon Prime. And I've been meaning to watch that for bloody ages. I watched the first episode after speaking to Owen and after watching Leopard, and it seems like a show I could probably get into. Mm. It may be the one, It may be the one that overtakes Vikings for me, to be mm. honest, because Vikings can be a hard watch at times. So um, I might just kind of drop that a little mm. bit and go over to Black Sails. Well, everybody likes pirates. Yeah, pirates are awesome. You know. Cutthroat Island was amazing. Talk about G- with Gina Davis. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so they, Fair enough. He, he comes back to town. <laughs> um, him and his brother obviously have a, a pretty strained relationship. You sort of find out through the movie why Owen... Uh, I keep calling him Owen. Um, the character's name is Jack. You You kind of find out as the movie goes on why Jack is sort of been away and, and he's had to come back and why it's so strained and yeah it's a really it's really deep it's it's deep really and it's very very dark it's and very dark very hard to watch in certain places at times but it's it's sort of like i mentioned at the start of the show how i'm a big fan of shane meadows it kind of has that Shane Meadows type feel where the camera sort of lingers. And even Owen, yes. Owen mentioned it in the in the interview about the, the scene in the forest, how they weren't meant to linger on, on Tom Hopper for that long, but he was just kind of in the zone. Shane Meadows does that as well. I, th- I think Shane Meadows very much does that on purpose mm-hmm. sort of thing. And obviously that was just something that, as Owen says, it happened on set that day. But... Um, they, that's what really drew me in straight away. You know I love a Shane Meadows movie. Oh, yeah. I love me some Paddy Considine. And you, I could really... You ever seen Dead Man's Shoes? No. I mean, watch Dead Man's Shoes. It's very much like Leopard. Uh, it's is that very, the one with Paddy Considine? Yeah. You've been, that's another one you've been trying to get me to watch for ages. It's very different. Yeah. It's very different to Leopard. But it kind of has the same sort of feeling at times. And I think you'd love that mm-hmm. as well. Watch that. That's that same. Um, it's very close to this sort of thing. Um... I love this movie. I really did. Yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. There's, not much, there's not there's there's not much more we can say about the movie without going into spoiler territory. Yeah. Um with the end of the movie uh-huh. we don't want to be doing that. We want you to go and watch it and, f- and find out what happens for yourselves. So 
Uh, we cannot ha- recommend the movie highly enough. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, a, a massive, massive thank you to Owen for, for coming on, speaking about the show, speaking about his, his other projects. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was great being able to see the movie as well. Dude's going to be in Resident Evil, man. I know. Well, he's in, he's in Resident Evil. It's yeah, finished. Well, it's finished. It's in post-production. Yeah. Like, we, we've interviewed someone who next year we're going to be watching Resident Evil and we're going to see him. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be like, wow, it's pretty badass. Isn't it? I like that. I do, I like that. Like, it's nice to catch them on the way up. Because <laughs> <laughs> then maybe they'll take us with them, you know? Like, I, I like it. Um, he, was, he was an absolute joy to speak to. The movie was... I wouldn't say it was a joy to watch. <laughs> no. It's a great movie. It's just maybe not a joy to watch. It's, like we say, just prepare yourself. It's... It can get dark at times. It can. It can. And, you know, one of the things... I think I said this to, to Owen in the, in the interview. Um, one of the things that I noticed pretty much from the, the, the word go with the movie was the, you know, the cinematography in the film. Yeah. was incredible. The score in the film is just tense as hell. Uh, and it just sucks you right in <laughs> to the movie, to these characters, to these two brothers. Yeah. It just sucks you right into the story. And it's great. Absolutely great, and and another thing that I I was I was tempted to bring up on the on the interview, but I completely forgot to. I had it in my head, and then because I didn't really want to go into like sort of you know the you know just the the willy nilly trivia of the whole thing. The the woman who um, is in the nightclub at the end, mm-hmm. did you recognise her? I did, but I I couldn't think of. Where from? Her name's Helen Pearson, right? She played Mrs. Osborne in Hollyoaks. She she owned the pub with Jack Osborne in Hollyoaks. I have no idea what you're going on about. Yeah. I recognised her straight away. Okay. And also, the, the lassie who they found, she was in a, a TV show that me and Lindsay watch called The Starlings, which, as soon as... Heard so, of that. As soon as we saw her, it was like, oh, look, it's, it's, it's her. So, again, another reason to watch it. And also... It star uh, or it, it uh, also appearing in the movie is an actor called Jack Rayner, who you oh, may yes. have just yes. seen in Transformers, whatever. Millions of people saw that movie. Age of Extinction. Not me, but millions of people did. I have seen the movie. <laughs> I have seen the movie. <laughs> I just the once. I put it on. Yeah, that's that's as far as I'll go. But, uh, but I'm sure he's excellent in it. Because he's great in this. He was certainly great in this. <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. We will Otherwise leave it, at it just gets nasty. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Leopard. Find it. Owen Mackin. Find him. Follow him. Give him your love. Give him your support. Watch the movie. Let him know what you think of it. I'm sure he'll message you back and say, ah, oh, thank you, you for that. You know what? He's, he's very, very friendly on Twitter and what have you. He I, seems uh, to be. After watching the movie, I actually messaged him on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Which is uncharacteristic for me. Yeah, did you hashtag him? No. No. That's that's okay then. No, I did not. No. No. I don't think I did. Please say you didn't. I didn't. <laughs> no. No. Anyway. And you replied. You know, yeah, within cool. what? Maybe like an hour you replied, which is that's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. The so. man was a gentleman. And like I say, um or as Chris said before, if you are in America, give Night Shift a watch as well. Uh, me me and me and the wife, we love our medical dramas. Well, she loves them more than I do. I like Chicago Med, that's about it. But we love all those TV shows, and as soon as I put this one on, first two or three episodes, it, it kind of pulls you in. Mm-hmm. It's, it's. You quite... know what? If 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 it was on, uh, I'll have a look on the Sony channel. I can't think of ever seeing the Sony channel, to be honest with you. It's it's in like the the six hundreds somewhere. Oh Jesus! Yeah, I know. Right. Is it even in HD? Probably. I don't, okay. know. I don't know. But that has been the episode with Owen Mack, and this has been the first official episode of Indie Talk. Yeah. And I feel that went down quite well. I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, you know, keep your eyes on the 365 Flix podcast feed yep. for upcoming episodes of Indie Talk. There's mm-hmm. more on the way to you. Believe oh, that. Believe it. Believe it. Including, hopefully, hopefully, a very special one to us. Oh, yes. A very special one to us. That, uh, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I think that can be good. But. I'm, I'm, Spoilers. I'm probably we don't gonna, want to jinx it, so... I'm probably going to fanboy the fuck out on that one. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> Come back for that one. Cool, cool, cool. cool.